Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. I want to ask you one single question throughout this entire video and I pray that you consider it very seriously, okay? Because in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus talked about that when he comes back, okay, he's gonna separate the sheep and the goats. And so the question I want to ask you is, as we examine this parable, this scripture that Jesus talked about, the question is, where, which group will you and I belong when Jesus separates the sheep and the goats? Will we be the sheep on the right hand that God calls the blessed to inherit his eternal kingdom? Or will we be called uh, the goats that, will be, that, that he calls cursed and will enter into eternal damnation? Okay, now in Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31 all the way to 46 we may not read the whole account okay but we're gonna we understand you probably uh, have heard of this um uh teaching before and this scripture before jesus says when the son of man comes in his glory when jesus comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory amen jesus is gonna sit on this throne all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep and the goats. Okay? And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Okay? Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me and I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Now, then it says, then the righteous will answer him. All of a sudden, the sheep turns into the righteous. Okay? So the sheep are the righteous, we find out the goats are the unrighteous, okay? Now what does the righteous um, tell Jesus? Basically, the righteous uh, are saying to, uh, to Jesus, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you? When do we see you thirsty and give you a drink? When do we visit you when you're in prison? When, you know, when, when do we do all these things? Okay? And then the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did to the, one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. That's the first group of people, okay? When they saw, when they saw, um, uh, well, Jesus was saying, when you see the, uh, the sick, you went and visited them. You visit those who are in prison. When you see those who are naked, you clothe them. You see that you need food, you gave to them. Jesus is saying, when you do those two, you know, even strangers or people you don't know, or the uh, people, the brethren, and you do it to them, you're doing it unto me. That's what Jesus is saying. And these are the ones, these are the righteous ones who enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, before I go any further, I don't want to give you the false idea that the more money you give to the poor, the more money you give to the charity or Christian organizations, the more you earn your way to heaven. That's not how it works. You got to look at the entire context of the, of, the, of the book of Matthew. Many times Jesus is talking about you repent. You read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, Jesus describes the characteristics of those who are truly born again believers. If you truly believe in Jesus, you repent of your sins and you trust in Him, you want to obey Him. You want to do His commandments. You want to help out those who are in need. You want to help out the brethren, the body of Christ, those who are living on a dollar a day. You want to help, you help, help them. If you can, that is. If you can, God obviously sees that. But He sees our heart. Okay? Those who are truly righteous, those who repented of their sins, trust in Jesus, and now don't shut up their heart when they see those who are in need. Why? Because Jesus says those who shut up their hearts and don't help others when they are, in the, when they are at, absolutely able to help, they don't have the heart of God. It's like the Pharisees who love money. They did all the religious duties, but they're not entering the kingdom of God. Now let's see what Jesus says to those who are on the left hand, those who are goats. Then, verse 41, then he will also say to those on the left hand, this is what Jesus is going to say, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food, I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then, those are, the, those are the goats on the left side. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord. And these people dare to call Jesus Lord. Okay? Matthew chapter 7 talked about the same thing. Lord, Lord, I've done all these miracles. I, done, I did all these great things. I went to church and did all these things. Jesus, I never knew you. You depart from me. It's the same language here. Same language here. 
These people call Jesus Lord. When did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, As surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it unto me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Guys, I don't know about you. When I read this, this brings the fear of God unto me. Now, you can call me all you want. You can call me work, salvation, whatever. I already told you. We're saved by grace through faith. If we repent of our sins, we trust in Jesus. We now, He washes clean by His blood, and we have the desire to serve Him. We have the desire to obey Him. That's the gospel I'm preaching. Whatever, you can twist the words, there are many people doing it. But I'm going to stand before the King of Kings one day, and I'll answer to Him. And He knows my heart. And He knows your heart also. Where is your heart today? Jesus says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew chapter 6. He says, you cannot serve both. He, can, he says, a person cannot serve two masters. Either he'll love one or hate the other. Okay? That's it. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve God and mammon. That was in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus talked about this. Okay? You can serve God, both God and money. And that's exactly what it's talking about here. There are people who are going to shut up their hearts. Now I'm telling you, when you go and look, I mean, you don't even have to go visit some of the countries, some of the nations in the world. You can just go online and there are multitudes of Christian organizations that you can go there and see that people are, are living in such poverty. And especially for those of us who live in maybe the more affluent nations, like maybe in North America, Europe, or whatever it is, you know, how can we look at people like that and not even have a heart to minister to them? Okay? Seriously. And, and if you want to really think about this, if you're in a situation where you're living with a dollar a day, going on a rice field, and I've been to these places where people actually go on the rice field without a cover, a shade in their head, they, they cut the, the, whatever the thing they do, the, the, the rice, they, they harvest the rice and the wheat, and they work the whole day for like 12, 14, 16 hours a day under the heat of the sun in the summer. And they, and they earn one to two dollars a day. And they live on that. And whereas we here, I mean, I, I'm again, I'm talking about the more affluent nations that we're in, maybe in the North America and different places like that. So many times we have such an abundance, yet we think we're in lack. But all we actually need to do is to examine our lifestyles and see, are there anything that are excess? And I'm not just talking to you. Daily, I'm, I, no, I'm, I, if not daily, like I'm always, many times I'm thinking, God, you know, am I living pleasing to you? You know, because like obviously God doesn't want us, none of us to, to walk in lack. But at the same time, he doesn't want to walk, he doesn't want us to walk in greed. You know, Paul says godliness with contentment is great gain. For we bring nothing into the world, we surely will bring nothing out of the world. So I want to encourage you guys today, when Jesus comes back, He's going to separate the sheep and the goats. How much of our resources and our money, you're going to remember, we're stewards. We don't own the money, we don't own the things that we have. Okay? So of the money and the salary and, and the income that God's got, I'm not talking about the give a 10% and you know expect all this stuff. And I, Okay, you know, guys, there's, there's the law of sowing and reaping. But I'm, talking, I'm not talking about this, this like super prosperity gospel. I'm just talking about biblical obedience to the Word of God. Then when we see someone in need, you know, when we see a, a, an organization like Gospel for Asia, okay, who by giving $30 a month, I think even like $20 a month, something like that, you can sponsor a missionary, you can sponsor a child so they can have food to eat, they can go to church, they can learn about Jesus, you know, they, they can, you know, support their family, this, they can be supported. I'm talking about just helping, like, that's like one dollar a day or less than a dollar a day to help out someone who is less fortunate than us. And Jesus, when He comes back, He's going to look at those, those believers who have obeyed His commandments. Now, obviously, I'm not going to put guilt on you on those who are really not able to do it. God knows your heart. Paul says, give according to what your purpose in your heart. Okay? This is not, this is not a guilt trip. This is something that we need to honestly assess our lives. Am I living in excess? Am I living in self-indulgence? 
do you really do you really need to buy all these gadgets and like new clothes every year and like better you know things do you really need that stuff you know this is something that god's been working in my life and he continues to work in my life okay we gotta consider these things because we're gonna have to face the holy god one day guys we're gonna have to stand before this king who's gonna sit on his throne and he's gonna judge the nations and he's gonna separate the sheep and the goats on that day, are we going to be the ones... You see, everybody's going to call Him Lord. The true believers are going to call Him Lord, and surely He is our Lord. The unbelievers, those who are quote-unquote believers, but they're not really believers, they didn't really obey Jesus, they weren't really believing in Jesus, they're going to call Him Lord. He says, Lord, when did we do these to you? And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, Lord, Lord, we've done all these great things. We went to church, we preached, we healed, we prophesied and all these things, we cast out demons. But we don't know. Jesus, I do not know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I'm telling you guys, there's come, the time is coming. The time is coming so soon and Jesus is going to sit on his throne. And he's going to come back with all the holy angels, with him and with his saints. And he's going to judge a whole world in righteousness. And on that day, the only thing that's going to matter is whether we truly repented of our sins, trusted in Jesus, and walked the holy life following the Holy Spirit. Our desire to follow Him, to pick up the cross, and to follow Him and to obey His commandments. And one of His commandments, it's to take care of the least of the brethren. Would you, would you and I want to do that? I mean, that's the motive, whether we actually want to do it. And when we do it, and we actually do these things, we're not sounding the alarm like the hypocrites, like the Pharisees. Well, look at me, look how many, look how many people I sponsored. We're not trying to be like that. Jesus, when you give, give in secret. Don't even let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Because when you do this in secret, He says, do not, He says, those who give with the intention of being seen by others, they have re received the rewards in full. That's why sometimes when I go to these meetings and I see, um, I, I know the intention is good. They're like, well, for those of you who help out in this project, those of you who gave to this ministry, stand up. We want to give you, um, you know, like either like applause or something like that. But I understand the intention is to honor those people who did it. But I'm just thinking if I'm in that crowd and I, and I gave to that ministry, whatever work it is, I'm not going to stand up. I don't want to lose my reward. <laughs> Jesus said, let your, let your charity be done in secret so that your Heavenly Father can reward you in the open when you do it in secret. Just like praying, you pray in secret, God will reward you openly. It's the motive, guys. You see, if you, if you can't give, okay, maybe God has you give some other way. Maybe you're offering your, you know, uh, your talent in teaching the Word of God. Maybe you can help people, uh, I don't know cutting the grass or something. I don't know. Like God gives different people different talents and to, to, to them much is given, much is required. Okay? For those of, for many of us who are living in North American more affluent countries, okay, we may think that we're earning this like middle income, whatever, and, and we think we need to, you know, get promoted and all these things. And I'm telling you, how much money do you need? How much? I was talking to this brother. He's working in this um, famous company here in Canada. And I, I'm, I'm like pretty encouraged by listening to him. We may, we may not see eye to eye and everything, but he's like, um, well, you know, I don't want to go be promoted in my company because it's just going to take more hours from my time. I'd rather take this time and serve God. So he demoted himself in a company, huge company in Canada. I mentioned a name, you'll know. He worked there for 15 years and now what he does is he spends more time ministering in the kingdom of heaven. He works and he does the things of God. He says, what am I going to do with my money anyway? I'm going to give it away anyway, <laughs> right? So how much money do you need? Is there adjustments that need to be made in my life? Yes, and it's a continual adjustment. And I want to encourage you guys, we need to look at these things because we have to give an account of our stewardship one day. And God is going to separate the sheep and the goats. So are you going to be the sheep? Or are you going to be goats one day? So I want to encourage you, if you are in the ability to give, and if, you, and if you truly love Jesus and you want to obey Him, this is one of the things that we want to obey Him. Because there are many brothers and sisters in Christ today around the world who is suffering. Okay, there are those who are being persecuted. I, I'm just going to tell you a few organizations that's good, that I know of. Those who are being persecuted, there's a ministry called Voice of the Martyrs. Okay, they minister to those who are being persecuted around the world. North Korea, underground churches in China, you know, wherever, Pakistan or something like that. The, uh, around the world. 
in the jungles of Colombia and stuff like that. They, people being persecuted and killed and tortured. You can help them. Okay? Gospel for Asia. Helping um, primarily those who are in, in Asia. Those who are living in poverty. The missionaries who are preaching the gospel. You can help them. Compassion Canada where I live. You know, uh, they have ministries where they, they help children in different nations who are living below the poverty line. And you can help them. They, 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 and they can... Uh, uh, all these ministries tell, teach them about Jesus. They can go to church, they can go to this, the center where this uh, program is provided, and they teach them about Jesus. They provide them food, provide them clothing. This is such a good thing to do. Guys, each, I'm telling you, if we're in North America, we, have, we can easily, easily sponsor at least one, if not more, children or these missionaries who are around the world. We can, I mean, like $30 a month, are you kidding me? I mean, like, if we would just fast, <laughs> you know, like a meal, a week, okay, that's your child right there. I mean, maybe like even two or three, depending on how you eat. So guys, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on you, but I feel the sense, the, 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 um, the, the urgency, the urge to encourage you and I that we really need to examine our lives, Okay. That we're not only living in our own in self-indulgence, okay? When, you know, when Christmas comes around the corner next time, you know, when someone get, you know, like your birthday or whatever, tell people, you know, I don't really want anything. Like, I mean, if, you know, I'm not trying, not trying to be pious. You're not trying to do this in a pretentious way. I mean, if you're looking at someone, you look at these pictures online, and you see this kid who's uh, dirt on his face, and they're trying to eat like, I don't know, like, like I don't know, like crumbs from the ground or something. Does that not break your heart? When you see, you know, young girls who are selling their bodies to make a living to provide for the families, does that not break your heart? I mean, this is what God is talking about. The motive. Our heart. Is our heart really loving Jesus? Are we really even picking up the cross and following after Jesus? This is what he's talking about. The book of James talked about true and undefiled religion is this. That you take care of the, the orphans and the widows. The true orphans and true widows. Helping out those who are truly in need. So guys, I just want to encourage you. When Jesus comes back, may you and I be the ones who are on the sheep, who are on His right hand, who will enter into His everlasting kingdom. Because we have repented of our sins and trusted in Jesus so that when He washes clean, we now want to obey Him. We want to, we want to give. We want to bless. It is blessed. It is more blessed to give, to, to give than to receive. That's what the Bible says. And I guarantee you, when you, it's, it's a joy when you give. If you're giving this and, and the grudging thing, man, if I don't give, I'm going to go to hell. Oh, man, seriously, you might as well not give that way. <laughs> might as well go back to square one. Come back to God in humility and say, God, I need to repent. When he comes.